Okay, it's a sad fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sad. It's the Game of Thrones uh, season finale, episode 10. Misa. Misa, which is, means mother in Valerian, like we all need. Uh, or, hey, old, old Giscari. Old Giscari. I'm sorry, old Giscari. <laughs> wow, you were going to say that. No, I, was a, I, I was just about, copied you. <laughs> I, I, no, I knew it wasn't Valerian. I knew it wasn't oh, Valerian. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Because right. yeah. um, she asked, the, the mother of dragons yeah. asked. I love it that I thought, Valerian. I was about to say I can't believe, I never thought that I would still like be able to respect myself and say something like that, but it turned out I was wrong. <laughs> it, wasn't even, it wasn't even right. It's great. Well, uh, you can respect yourself. So we'll get to that in, in a moment because we obviously have a what's been clear all along is that she's assembling Daenerys is assembling this really dangerous badass army with a bonus of three dragons uh-huh. although they're still very young they're uh-huh. still little dragons yeah um, I, can I I'm gonna interject a yeah. quick thought there as um, Stannis's daughter was reading the book about the and you saw if I paused it to, to see it I knew that picture was important but I didn't pause it okay yeah. so it, it was about the Targaryens and it was a dragon and it was a woman on top of a dragon and it was one of the older women who you know c- conquered the lands etc cetera, etc cetera. she was riding the dragon mm. and they said it was the smallest of the dragons but could still eat a horse whole mm. so when they conquered the seven kingdoms the dragons were significantly larger than they are now right like there's no way Daenerys could get on top of one of those dragons Their teeth are like right. this long right <laughs> exactly so that's it's it could be very relevant, relevant. We, to these dragons need to grow up for yeah. them to, but that said she's got a big army you need to give them some HGH and that's right totally the dragons are on steroids anyway <laughs> Ben Anna John and Jenk uh, I was very sad when this ended I thought it was a good season finale but as always you're like okay great 40 weeks I know. Yeah. At I least. hate that part. I hate that we have to wait so long. Do we know exactly when? I looked up the starting dates. Mm-hmm. It was like April 1st, season one, April 5th, March 31st. So it's always right it's, on the cusp it's, it's of March true. to April. So we got 40, basically 40 weeks yeah. is what yeah. we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, the dragons are going to be ancient by then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I know that we've already established that the second to last episode is usually the one that has the most action in it. But it's the one with the most beheadings. Yes, it definitely <laughs> is. And I have to say, I don't, I'm not sure I really like that. Because even though the last episode was a good episode, I felt like it was anticlimactic compared to the last episode. I'll tell you what I think that is from a... Uh, you know, and I, I'm, I don't write professionally, but what I think artistically that is, and I could be wrong, is that if that had been the last episode, if our last shot is something along the lines of Caitlin screaming, and then I don't think, I think that is too difficult and too upsetting to people to yeah. then say, now you got to sit on this for 40 weeks. So yeah. they essentially think of these last two as the finale, and these like ease you into the little, and ebb your anger somewhat. It's like exhaling. After, you know, this, like, right. oh, God, big shocking moment. Right. And imagine if our last episode of season one had been, like, cutting off Ned's head. Like, and then we're, like, see you in a year. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It's a hell yeah. of a cliffhanger, if you ask me. Like, I'm definitely not going to stop watching the show after that. Still, but it's our, know? but, I mean, we've got, as we're set up here, I'm yeah. looking at my notes, we've got, like, I mean, all there, all there are are cliffhangers. Yeah, yeah. That's true. all right, listen. The but I hear you, it's interesting, it's clearly, <laughs> like, this conversation that we have, is clearly a conversation that they had. Yeah. Like, right. I'm sure yeah. there are people there who thought, let's go out right. on top. With the, bang. Yeah. The, the second reason is a sad day goes to all of this, which is that I was secretly hoping, even though we know episode nine is usually the big episode, that episode 10 was as big or bigger. Yes. And I was hoping that John was just trying to be coy and be like, oh, that was the big red wedding thing. <laughs> 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 Wait till they get a lot of Joffrey being t- you know, yeah. eviscerated and hung by his own innards and stuff, yeah. right? And freaking Joffrey still lives! And Joffrey he's still happy. lives, he's and even worse, Theon Greyjoy still lives, and I hate that they're dragging that out. Just kill him already! Not, I don't want to deal with Theon Greyjoy anymore. Him. He's yes. going to get rescued by his badass sister. Yeah, that's Right, true. that's true. That Although, was, in the book, I, I mean, I heard that in the book, he just kind of disappears, whereas... For a long time. Okay, but he makes a, a he reappears in the book somehow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So n- the, as far as I know, all of this could have happened in the books. You just didn't see it. I see. Okay. Yeah. okay. And that, by the way, you want to talk about a, a real bastard, Ramsay Snow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. good actor. Yeah, and Roose yeah. Bolton's son. Roose Bolton's a bastard enough. Now his bastard's bastard. Oh, for Christ's sake, this guy's a yeah, terrible a, guy. A and the clash between Ramsay Snow. And uh, and Theon Greyjoy's sister. Yep. Ah, it's gonna be fun. Right? Yeah, uh, that and that one. I you know look. Obviously, they'll do anything. 
on the show, it just seems like that's a clash that has to go to, to the Greyjoy girl. Uh, no, Ramsey's a super badass. Yeah. And, uh, and remember, Balon Greyjoy is one of the leeches thrown into the fire. So I'm like, Balon still lives, Joffrey still lives. I have no opinion on Balon's survival. I got it, he was thrown into the fire, he's gone. The sister takes down the son, takes down. All right, takes well, we're down. gonna find out. No, because it's too good. First of all, she gave too good a speech. First of all, she just disobeyed her father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like in a way, and it's interesting that we had seen a scene earlier of Tyrion's and everyone's total inability to challenge Tywin. Mm -hmm. right. Like you don't challenge him at all. And, and, and what's, what's Lord Greyjoy, what's his first name? Balon. Balon. So Balon's like, that's it, he's, his, his, his penis is gone, he's, now he's no son of mine, it's not worth one ship, it's nothing, I'm out, right? Uh -huh. And she's like, yeah, he's your son, it's my brother, I'm taking the fastest ship and I'm taking our best men. And you know how the rest of that conversation went, where he was just like, ah, whatever. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Okay, so I have a couple things on it. First of all, I loved when she said that and they showed one guy with like these like scars across mm -hmm. his face and like the baddest weapon I've seen in a long time and I was like, yeah. dude, these are some serious murders she's yeah. taking with him, right? Yeah, because and, it's not an army. They're a, right. a sort of They're assassins, just kind of. They're right, it's guys. SEAL Team 6. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. It's mm -hmm. Ironborn SEAL Team 6. Right. <laughs> okay, second of all with the Steel Team 6. Oh, <laughs> good. Uh, Iron Team 6. <laughs> okay, um, so, and Iron sharpens iron. Um, so uh, that's a Steelers reference no one got. Okay, anyway, um, and Theon, um, shoot, what I was gonna say, oh, with the Ironborn, um, I feel that they're more defiant of everything, including their parents. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like, right. she, that's the, what Ironborn do. That's what like, they do. Like, he almost wouldn't respect her if she followed his orders. Do you and see just, what I'm saying? And to add on to that, she's got the 50 men. Like, she's going because she feels a sisterly love for him. But, like, the other Ironborn, they don't give a fuck about Theon. They don't care at all. They're just going to kill some people. <laughs> yeah. Why not the bastard? But you sense that she probably, if there's anybody there who has... You sense they're loyal to her. Yeah, they're loyal to her, mm -hmm. but they probably couldn't care less about Theon. Like, right, when he went back, nobody, nobody cared about But if about she him. says, is my brother, we're going to exactly. go get him, they'll... Yeah. I, oh, I imagine I don't know they'll what take I was it say about Theon. Jesus, how stupid is that guy? Now, uh, since that episode where, it, you know, the last episode when I asked you, what's that, that X, right, that was behind yeah. the troops uh, when uh, they were strategizing, Rob Stark was, and you said, oh, that's the insignia of the Boltons. Mm -hmm. You're hanging on an X. <laughs> What's the big guessing game? You're at the place did, of the Boltons. But didn't he How say, stupid are you? But didn't he admit that? I mean, that is what no, he... No, no, no. He pretended to be the car stars. Reveal. Yeah. Remember mm. when Ramsey's pretended, oh, you got me, I'm part of the car stars. I couldn't remember what he pretended. Yeah. yeah. But we knew he was the Boltons. That was our speculation throughout. Yeah, only at the end of last episode. Yeah. Right. No, we've been, I thought, that we, earlier. No. I don't know. I mean, I knew, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We, when, we, when we saw the X, that's when we uh, thought that he was with the Boltons, and then it all well, made, it more so than made last, sense. That was not last the, episode. Because the cool. Boltons are now with the Lannisters, so it made sense that he had to do that whole chick, trick on Theon to find out what happened to the kids, because he's got to go hunt down the kids. Mm -hmm. To me, it didn't make sense before, because the Boltons are with... With, or with the Starks, the but he said, I'm a better hunter. Ramsey said to well, Theon, I'm a better hunter right. than you are. I'll go hunt him down. Why mm -hmm. does he want to hunt him down? Well, it's because he's with the Boltons who crossed well, over the Lannisters. Then there's one significant piece of either a screw up or, or, or an intriguing fact about Ramsey's. Because Tywin described to Tyrion when he was defending Sansa, he was like, look, her father's dead, her brother's dead, all the Stark men are dead. Oh no, they still think the kids are dead. Well, right. But, but so Ramsey's apparently has not gotten that information yeah. to Tywin. That's interesting. That's or, right. But I mean, obviously, or Tywin was lying. To or Tywin was lying, or doesn't consider the kids important enough. That mm. seems unlikely. But either, or they messed up. Um, mm. But or he doesn't consider them men, so yeah, he leaves he leaves it out. But. Or Ramsey's decided to keep that information uh, to himself for some reason. Either he way, is a bastard. All, all kind, right, he is a bastard. All, all those are, are intriguing possibilities because they're alive and one of them is a f serious threat to you. Okay, <laughs> right. another side note here before we get to the Five Kings. So um, Cersei's reaction when uh, Jamie Lannister get, comes back in, what did you guys make of that? Was she happy, not happy? 
She seemed very happy in the begin, like in the very initial like stage. Like hearing his voice, you see like her face kind of lights up when she turns around and looks at him and notices that he no longer has a hand. She, I don't, I can't tell if she's either disappointed or scared, worried for him. I don't know. That's and I was, finger. yeah, and I was trying to, you know, really figure out what her emotion was. Um, but I feel so terrible for him because he comes in there and he looks disappointed in himself. You know, holding his arm up like that while she has this look of astonishment. Yeah, I think that in one sense we're not supposed to know what her reaction is, but in the other, I think we're just, you know, she's a schemer and a climber and is interested in protecting not even her children. She doesn't care about her children. That was a horseshit scene, right? Think so? I think she cares uh, about no, her children. No. I definitely do. I think and, that and, even. And I actually secretly think that Cersei's going to come through because there's only like three or four people in the world she cares about, and Jamie's one of them. And I think that she's gonna like rally to his side. I think she is reassessing her options instantly as to like, he's out, like this is not my, I, I lose power with Jamie. Jamie mm -hmm. is not gonna, it's, you know, that's If she d does that, it will be a horrible mistake because it'll drive Jamie to, t uh, to Tyrion and they'll make an awesome combination. Absolutely. The Jamie-Tyrion uh, alliance. It's over. It's guaranteed. Take it to the bank. <laughs> First of all, it was already, to some extent, the, some groundwork was left for it. It was easy for Jamie because Tyrion wasn't, you didn't need to take him seriously. He liked him. It was his brother. It was his, it was his you know, drinking, whoring, imp brother who I feel bad for, but I look out for and I clearly love. But now Tyrion, you know, obviously there's, there, there's, there's potential power behind Tyrion. Now, let Which, me throw uh, one fun, intriguing possibility out there. What if the Kingslayer did it again? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh! Now, remember, Joffrey's his son, though. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that would be a bit of a stretch. But I'm, just, I'm throwing a curveball yeah, out there to see what happens. It doesn't really seem like anyone gives a shit about their children. So I wouldn't be surprised if something yeah. like that happened, you know? Right. Especially Joffrey. if it has to do with, uh, like, gaining power in some way. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. speaking of romances, we have to do Jon Snow and Eugene. Yeah. Let, yes. let, let, let me do, let me finish with Ty, because I just want, before we We should do that past, scene between yeah, Tywin and Tyrion, Tyrion, right? Should yeah. we talk about because that Because I'm trying to figure out who... Tywin is in like other worlds because he's clearly incredibly powerful. He is the best at everything, but he's obviously missing a, as we've had referenced again and again and again, he's missing everything. He doesn't know about the dragons. He doesn't, he's not worried about the White Walkers. He doesn't know about the warg of the eyes rolling back in the head or the red woman. He doesn't. All the magical stuff. Magic stuff doesn't, and it's here and it's going to kill him. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to do him in. Like, he ruled the world before the internet, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you know, it's like Tywin is, he sold stamps, and mm -hmm. everybody fucking needed stamps, because how else are you going to get a message? He Somebody. sold SUVs. Right, totally, right, totally. And the yeah. Japanese come in from the east. Right, totally, right. right. I don't know if he's IBM or Microsoft, right. but, like, he used to reign in the old world. And, and the new world hasn't... Has Apple. Yeah. Eh. But he's not going to reign, he's not going to reign in the new world, because also, like, like that conversation with Tyrion, which was such a great scene, like he doesn't, he didn't even get, he still doesn't take Tyrion seriously. Mm -hmm. Like he kept saying to Tyrion things that were obvious. Like you really think, you know, when Tyrion says, you just sent the most powerful man in Westeros to his bed without dinner. And he goes, you don't seriously think he's the most powerful man in Westeros. And you're like, no, obviously. Yeah, he's of course, he's being sarcastic. You fucking he's an incredibly yeah. bright guy. <laughs> he's yeah. an incredibly smart guy. And he In did fact, that. he was thanking you for bitch slapping him. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he doesn't either know or and to get back to the to Bran and uh, and uh, uh, Rickon. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, he, <laughs> he doesn't even know or is dismissing their existence. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. yeah. He, he, to me, he's kind of like Dick Cheney. Uh, you know, we've, I made this analogy before, but. I mean, he knows the bureaucracy really well, and he's the hand of the king, but in reality, he's you king, know, right. he's yeah. the king, he's also, right? Like, he's very, he's capable, but he's also flawed. Like, he has this weird homophobia. He, you know, he, he doesn't seem like he's driven by emotion, yet when Joffrey's, like, in his face, like, you hid under Casterly Rock, which is not actually technically true, he, like, he reacted emotionally. Like, you could see he was pissed. Yeah. So he's not yeah. a perfect guy. He and he back significantly. He sent him to bed, and he 
drugged him. Yeah. <laughs> and if you give him enough of that stuff, it kills them. I, I see it as sort of a sort of implicit threat, I guess, even mm -hmm. though they're just trying to put him to sleep. The other uh, comparison to Dick Cheney is hubris. Mm -hmm. So as, right. as uh, Cheney had hubris, like, we'll go into Iraq, we'll knock it off in two weeks, whatever, right? It's done. Let's move on to Iran, right? So as, as smart as he was with the bureaucracy and being able to control the whole government, et cetera, Taiwan has the same exact problem. So as good as he is with that, he's got this hubris like dragons. Mm, right. Oh, the imp, like the imp knows something. Come yeah. on, right? right? Totally. Uh, yeah. So, so, so I think that that's I think that that's significant. Not just that we're hoping for it, mm -hmm. but by the way, Charles Dance I think plays him. Oh, it's great. It's good. Yeah. So yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you what. As a general point about movies and, and TV shows like this, is that great writing makes great actors. Absolutely. Now, I think everybody knows that, but I mean, it's a different level. I mean, yeah, but, I, I, you, but you always underestimate this. I mean, yes, great writing, great actors can make great writing wonderful, but if you have terrible actors and great writing, you don't even hear the great writing. No, no, I hear you, but look, so you'll get a little finger every once in a while. You know I don't like the actor who's little <laughs> finger, right? And I think that it's like nails on a chalkboard to some degree and otherwise a great cast, right? Uh -huh. uh, but in terms of but then, that has, that, has Tywin Lannister ever acted that good in his entire life? I'm sure. I Maybe don't know. I'm has sure Ramsay has. Snow ever acted that good in Egret. his entire life? I don't know. Egret, whatever. All of them are seem brilliant. How could they put together nine brilliant actors? Were they was the <laughs> yeah, greatest you don't, casting? Yeah, but you're underestimating that whole process. Here's how they did it. They looked at hundreds of people. They yeah, took forever to cast this. Yeah. Yeah. Forever. So it's, uh, it all makes a, a big difference. But that said, there are other good actors who could do it. I mean, it's not, they didn't yeah. find the only people, but I mean, those, Ashton Kutcher. those casting, <laughs> right, totally, yeah. Uh, yeah, you make those casting decisions. By the but, way, I didn't like Robert Baratheon's casting either. But oh, I loved yeah. him. I thought he was great. I thought he was, right. great. Yeah, I liked I thought him. He was so he great. I thought he should have been stronger. Yeah. He was, he was fr Friar Tuck. No, it's like you it's make, the same like, actor a, you make like a good time. casserole, and then it just sort of like... Uh, yeah, but look what happened that's to him. What I mean, that's the whole point, is yeah. that if he'd been that tough, he wouldn't have gotten killed by a boar. Yeah, yeah he would have if he was drunk yeah. enough. Anyway, well, Five Kings? No, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Just, be, just because it's, it's attached talk. to this. Uh -huh. Can we just knock out Shay really fast? Because that's the yeah, last like, capital yeah, thing. Yeah. So we have the scene where Varys goes and offers money to Shay. Like a year ago, if she'd been offered this, she would have taken it in a second and gone and lived as a rich woman or whatever. So like your reactions, but also she seems to think that he was sent by uh, Tyrion, even though we see no direct indication of that. So what do you think? No, I don't think he was sent by Tyrion. Oh, no, no way. I, no but way. I think, but it goes to what I think you, you, you said maybe in the first season when we were having a conversation about it or sometime that Varys is legitimately maybe the only one who actually cares about what he talks about, that he yeah. does care about the realm and he cares yeah. about protecting the realm. And we got an indication of that when he went to see Ned Stark in the dungeon. He'd like, I'd like to help you, but now you're beyond help. Like, I can't, you, I would love it if you had been, like, you, if you'd sat on the Iron Throne, mm -hmm. I think it would have been great, but you, you're done now. But sad. <laughs> right, sad day for you. So, I mean, sometimes he can be cold, but nonetheless his, like, and he legitimately see, because in that conversation, we had great little cutaways of Varys listening to Tyrion talk, and he's like, he gets it. Like, he's like, no, Tyrion is, as always, he thinks that there's real potential there, and he does, he's right, because if Tyrion had an opportunity to kill Joffrey, or undermine Joffrey, right, mm -hmm. or save Shay, he'll go save Shay, mm. you know? Yeah. So I think he recognizes that. So you think he's protecting Shay? You think that's his? Varys? Uh, yes. No, I think he's protecting the realm, which is what Varys always does. Right. And Shay is, a, as he said, a complication, yeah. because he needs Tyrion to have sex with Sansa and to shore up and, and be the leader. So there was that and not scene. Just, and not just have sex with her, but like focus. Yeah. Like be yeah. present here right. and yeah. not have and this thing that could undermine him, get Tyrion killed and get her killed too. It could, it does perhaps save her, but that's not his motivation. So there was that scene with Tyrion and Tywin and every time there's a scene with the two of them, it's always gut-wrenching because Tywin oh. is such an asshole to Tyrion constantly and he basically makes the point that, you know, allowing him to survive was one of the biggest mistakes that he ever made, right? Or sacrifices. And one of the biggest sacrifices he ever made made me feel sick. And then he basically indicated, like, you need to have babies with Sansa immediately. And then he goes into the room where Sansa is sitting, and she's visibly upset. She probably just found out that her family got murdered. Um, and I was trying to figure out whether or not he went in there because he's going to listen to his dad and actually go forward with trying to have babies with her. Because hmm. that's what it kind of seemed like when he first walked in. Then he saw she was upset, and then he walked out. Impossible to determine, but I thought the same thing. Right. I, I thought, like, 
there's some chance he was like, all right, I got to I got to do this. And yeah. then he sees her and he's like, there's no chance. And of course, that made mood. me also right. think about Shay. And of course, Shay is a complication. And then it made me try to analyze whether or not she made the right decision. Is it the right decision to stay there? Should she have taken that bag uh, of diamonds to leave? I think no, he just no, went no. To she see pulled Sansa. a Rob Stark. Take yeah. the diamonds and run for the yeah. hills. Mm -hmm. I think she, he was just going to see Sansa to, I mean, obviously, at some point, frown you, saw, you saw they're, they're, they're connecting. So they're going to be together. Yeah. They're going to mate. That was uh, a good scene of them dumb. joking the one, and stuff yeah, about yeah, the dung yeah. and, and the mattress. The, the, the that was shift. Nice. Yeah. yeah, the shift. That was great. Uh, and um, in terms of Tywin, I actually thought when he said that was the best, greatest sacrifice I made, that was actually the sweetest thing he's ever said. Really? He like, made it seem like he was so reluctant. Of. You know, like uh, he that was, was, but he's like, but for you, I sacrificed and I in kept you alive. In the context of him, it's sweet. I yeah. No. It's like, I, got the sense, I got the sense that he regretted it and he just wished that yeah, totally. the Tyrion was dead. It was just another, no, no, but he needs it now. No, it's a given that he always wished that Tyrion was dead. Yeah. And he apparently genuinely loved his wife. And since you know she died in the birthing process, he doubly hates her. And he's like, am I him. not him. merciful? Yeah. That I saved your life. Yeah. You, you talk about family. I despised you, and I kept you and because you you would you to despise you. your family. You would think, you know, that at some point, children who have parents who are that cruel, that vicious, that unloving, that ungiving of any of the things that parents are supposed to give, you would think that the children at some point would be like, yeah, we've reached the point where you're beyond hurting my feelings, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. It, it hasn't happened with like, Tyrion, and I think it doesn't happen in life. I think parents are able to hurt their kids. Again and again and again and again, if they choose to. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, Egret, um, did you think she was gonna uh, actually hit him with the arrows? No, I didn't. And I was surprised when she did once. I was super surprised when she did it three times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Bitch is crazy." She's also very accurate, by the way. That third one was on the run. You know, and, and it's weird because it's that awkward moment where you're against her, you don't want her to do it, but you feel like some sympathy for her because she's no, so you broken. Feel sympathy for her. <laughs> I feel sympathy for Jon Snow getting of hit with I three. Feel, I'm on Jon Snow's side, but the thing is, he loves her and he told her, "I love you," right? And she, but and she, 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 you know, she was like that. That reached her. Yeah, no, but that reached yeah. her in the wrong way. Yeah. And, and, and Jon. Snow's an idiot, okay? Yeah, like, I'm surprised he survived, but I knew he was gonna survive. It didn't matter if she hit him with six arrows, I knew he was gonna survive. Yeah. They can't kill all of the Starks in one season, I come know, on. The show is full of I, I know, so I know. Knows. They weren't gonna kill Jon Snow, I would have bet anything on it, right? Uh -huh. But he, he, first of all, don't say, like, I love you, but I'm gonna leave you, okay? <laughs> and I don't, and it's I care more about me. my family of like a bunch of old men, the dirty old men at a wall, than I care about you. But I'll rub it in your face a little bit by saying, "Oh, I kind of love you." Yeah, like it makes her want to go. Oh, yeah, here's what I think. Okay. <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, I've got to go home. Come with me. Come with me. Right. Come with me. It's the fact that he, he didn't say. He can't take her. He I took know. an oath. He wasn't even supposed to bang her, but he did it anyway. <laughs> I know, but that's what <laughs> goes to show you he, he does it. Looking crazy. <laughs> no, but that goes to show you he doesn't love her enough, right? That's what makes her so angry, and rightfully so. The Heroic thing would have been like, come with me. We'll go live in some hinterlands. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go talk to the guys at the wall. I'll tell them what I know, and then be like, yeah, I broke my oath. I gotta go. To go back to you, well, you can't do that. But be like, oh, I'll be right back <laughs> and run away. Right, right. Uh, so we did our little thing after the main show where we talked about why the Red Wedding was so shocking. It's because they had all these plans and everything afterward. Well, like, she had left the North. She's headed down to this area that she has never known before. And she had been envisioning now for weeks or possibly months just life with him. And now yeah. it was totally cut off in one fight scene. Well, but, but if that, by the way, if that's right, that it was, I think it's too much. It's, like, too dramatic, that turn. Like, it's complicated. She's got to know that it's complicated. So you're telling me that you can't, like, if, you, if they find out you broke the oath of being with a woman, they'll kill you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I look, if, if you run away, death, if you run away, maybe. it's instant death. Yeah. Remember in the very first episode, Ned Stark kills someone I got just for running Desert, away from For the deserting. Right. But what if you come back, and then the guy didn't really desert, it's a little bogus. Uh-huh, yeah. um, uh, What if you... I, I don't know for woman. sure. It might be death, it might not, I'm not I sure. Know. It's, it's, I don't know, I'm just, right. I'm just curious. I mean, if you came good. back and said, hey, listen, my bad, I was on the other side, so they I, made me have sex with her, right. but I, she, I hate her now, and I've right. sent her away. <laughs> and here are the arrows to show you how much I hate her. Right, I mean, <laughs> what, my guess is they're gonna get over that, right? right. But, but we don't know, I'm not sure what the rules are. I right? think, I, I sense that there needs to be a, uh, there needs to be a renaissance at the wall. 
Uh, like they need to they need to rethink some of these some of these rules. Well, they're, they're well, letting Gilly cook now. Right. Yeah. Right. right I mean, yeah. Oh, and by the way, last thing on that is Sam Tarley. For him to be the first man <laughs> in thousands of years to kill a white walker. I know, How I know. awesomely Somebody ironic has to is that? be the first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's That's amazing. Amazing. yeah. And, and how did, uh, and by the way, you got your answer at least on the on the knife. Like, how could he not take the knife? Oh, yeah. They got plenty of knives. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thanks, by the way, it, it makes the white walkers seem so weak. Like, all you need is a special knife. You hit them in the back and they're done. I know. I don't well, care. Well, yeah, I think they've ruined coming. it. Yeah. No, but they haven't been threatened by anything for thousands of years. If they even remember the dragon glass, they certainly didn't think the fat guy behind him had one. <laughs> yeah, he right. destroyed his other sword with his bare hand. So the bottom line is the White Walkers seem like they have no chance against the dragons. I mean, so they're going to come down, we got the dragon glass, and then, by the way, we also have the dragons themselves. Mm -hmm. Fire is a huge Achilles heel for them. I'm thinking like, you know, T Tyrion could knock them out by himself. You know, throw a little Blackwater <laughs> Bay action on their ass and see how that goes. What right? was the distinction, John, between when Sam referred to the, is there like the White Walker men and then the... So there's the White Walkers and then there are like the zombified. Zombies. Yeah, and they have, they have different weaknesses. So like the Dragon Glass, like yeah, it'll kill a White Walker. It'll do absolutely nothing to those zombies. You need to use fire on those. We haven't seen what fire does to a White Walker if it does anything. Um, so who's so more, yeah, the, I don't even know who's more powerful. The, the, White, White, the White Walkers, Walkers presumably. Yeah. Right. Assuming you have fire. can be killed like armies can be killed. Right. Like, because you remember they yeah. had a fight with the, uh, with the crows right. out in the middle of the snow, mm -hmm. and yeah. the crows won, although it did heavy damage to the crows. Right. right. Well, but they I, did I, beat I would, the zombies. I wouldn't say they won. I think they fled. The zombies fled? Well, no, 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 they, no, I think the men fled. They killed uh, one of the zombies yeah. in Matwina when, they when, burned it, when yeah. ghosts... Re saw you know ghosts right. saved them all yeah. uh, in the in the house or fort or whatever that wall um, castle black yeah castle black right so yeah I, I I don't think the dragon glass weakens the notion of the white walker because I mean well, he found like twenty two of them yeah. and gave him some and what if the I mean white that's going to sword that's going to help them in their quest north of the wall they'll be able to ward off twelve of them. But it's no way to win. You don't win yeah. a war against the White Walkers with 14 pieces of dragon glass. Uh, yeah, you would hope that they could replicate that somehow, especially now that they have dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, and but I like that he gave a couple more to the archer, and that mm -hmm. was a t clear foreshadowing that little girl is going to kill a bunch of White Walkers. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> totally. Yeah. So that's going to be a cool scene. Yeah. And speaking of little girls killing people, how about Arya? Oh, I love oh, that. Scene. Okay, look, I, I got to jump in with that. What I liked about this episode, and I feel like every episode has some sort of theme. This episode's theme in my eyes was strong women, right? Mm -hmm. So you have uh, Daenerys uh, rallying more troops. You have Arya killing a dude with like a little, uh, you know, dagger, dagger yeah. thing. And then um, who else? Egret, right? I don't know if that's really her being strong. Um, no, it is. I actually is like Egret better than I like Jon Snow. I mean, I oh, think Jon Snow's a bit of a bitch. <laughs> okay, so, and, and she kill, was willing to kill him even though he does that thing he does with his tongue. <laughs> and then She's you, like the wildling sender regards bitch boom and you also had you also had Theon Greyjoy's sister yeah. not listening to her father so and, there was a theme and, there with strong women and Shay with the and, yeah tell him to tell me himself That's all over it you know yeah. right yeah, I'm beginning to believe the writer might be like the biggest feminist in history probably yeah. I wouldn't be surprised you know, and he's a super lib like the maybe, outcasts and you, yeah. the, the way, bastards hmm. the you know the, the handicapped the prostitutes you women name? Daenerys? In your I did, oh, yeah. yeah. Daenerys rallying the troops. Yeah, I mean, rallying the troops, but like Misa. walking in Misa. and like. Can being, I jump in real yeah, fast? And then doing Misa. the crowd surfing, yeah. Yeah, crowd <laughs> surfing was a little funny. Yeah. Well, just really fast before we continue on with the Arya. So we totally know that her name is Daenerys, by the way. We affectionately refer to her as Khaleesi because it's fun, it's her title. Yeah. But there was probably a thousand comments saying, why do they keep calling her Khaleesi? Do they not know what her name is? Oh, dude, come we on. Totally we totally know, know what her name is. Come Look, on. I call my wife Khaleesi now. What are you talking about? Okay. It's like the funnest thing. Yeah. Misa's okay, but Khaleesi's yeah, like so Khaleesi much Khaleesi better. better yeah. yeah. All right, so Arya with the killing, right? Yeah. I love the like. Who's your kid? Who's your kid? Stark send your regards. What will happen now? She drops the coin, kind of like the, the, yeah. the scroll was dropped earlier on. Right. But, right. but that right. makes yeah. me realize that maybe, maybe the Starks have a chance because she's like the last remaining Stark, and she's a fighter, and I think she gets it, right? Well, you can no longer south be of the wall. Or right. She right. You, I realize that like. You, Five Starks left. <laughs> I know, but she's the re she's yeah. the relevant Stark. She's the Stark that actually gets it. You well, can't Arya's be the nice guy. John, Rickon, Bran. Oh, John, you're counting John. Yeah. Okay, but he's a bastard. 
Yeah, natural born. <laughs> right, but I mean, he's, you're saying you dismiss him. He's a bastard. But the but the but Ramsey the Snow. but Ramsey Snow. I mean, like they're all like there's right. No and then the King's bastard. Baratheon right. That, that, that's, bastard. That's, that's, I didn't mean. Yeah. That's what I meant. Is that they're yeah. like all of a sudden like they're pretty relevant. They, still. We may be in the rethinking bastard time as part of my renaissance. Also, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right. But anyway, I, I just feel like in that scene you see that Arya gets it. Okay, no more Mrs. Nice Girl. No more playing games. You got to be ruthless. You have to be a killer and she's out for revenge. So I think that in the next season, we are going to see some great scenes with her where she does some crazy stuff. I yeah, can't I, wait. I never thought she was Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. And I always thought she was a stone cold killer. Like, that okay. scene surprised me 0%. I saw, I saw an evolution, though. You know, you see her, you know, be the mm -hmm. sweet girl who's learning sword fighting with her father, Ned. Right. And, you know, you see her make little mistakes along the way, but now she's out for blood, and I right. love it. I love the line that she gave when he was like, is that the first man you killed? And she's like, the first man, which is a callback to her accidentally killing the boy in the first season or whatever. But also, it's like ominous. Like, that's the first that I killed. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. I thought about killing the boy. And she, 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 the, she recited the thing that, that her assassin taught her, right? Valor Mogulis, yeah. Yeah, which means what? Refresh. All men must die. Uh, but is it, is it, does it call up some sort of power? Or is it just something I think it was say? just a bad thing She just to knows say. it as something that he said. Oh, and then there was um, one other thing that I wanted to bring up. I, sorry to change the subject, but when Daenyra says, all men learn to love their chains, I uh, loved I loved uh, what she said there. I thought that right. that was really good. Well, I get, look, I, the thing I love about uh, Daenerys is that she's not just, you know, brave and all that stuff, but she's also incredibly smart. Like, the strategy yeah. of freeing the slaves is brilliant because... You go into kingdoms with slaves, all you say is, I got, I'm going to free you guys. Oh, all of a sudden, your army's my army. Yeah. What now, bitches? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, it's not just the right thing to do. It's the smart thing to it do. It is a smart thing to do, but I worry that sometimes she might be a little too democratic and too nice. <laughs> You know, um, I know that she has this huge army Com at this point. She has always works out in Game of Thrones. What are you talking about? <laughs> Never works out in Game of Thrones. We all know that. Um, I know that she has, you know, the bonus of the dragons. I know that she's she has this massive army at this point. It's only growing from what it seems like. But I'm worried that she's going to make a mistake of being too nice and too sympathetic. And there's, it'll it, there's some chance you stop watching the show if they kill Daenerys. There's a huge chance that I'll stop watching the show. <laughs> she's my favorite character, so right. I'd be very upset. Like that would be. Devastating. It would be devastating. Yeah. yeah. I'd like uh, to see her have some more scenes. Like me everything too. she has so is yeah, just one. it's just but it's also everything she has is grand. That's right. Like we don't That's get right. any moments of just sort of like the bathtub scene was was maybe counted. Mm -hmm. But still everything is a big show for her. Everything's a big set piece. Like we don't yeah. get to That's see her. That's a good point. You know, we to, yeah, right. We don't I get to didn't really like that last scene. Both as I didn't like that they ended on it because uh, as a lot of the reviews are saying, they sort of already did that in the fourth episode when she liberates the, 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 the slaves yeah, and that's solid. the end of it. But also, like, there, it's some, there's something incredibly ironic about, and I think it's intentional, that she says, I can't give you your freedom. Your freedom was always your own. And they respond with, yes, master, <laughs> yes. Right, but that's leadership. Jesus. I mean, that's, that's, that's and, yeah. But it also, and that she likes it. Like, oh, she, she likes it. being lifted up oh, and, like, glorified. Like, but also, it's her. the image of the white woman who saved all these brown people. Like, we've seen that in a lot of movies and TV shows in the past. I, I, I feel extremely uncomfortable. By the yeah, but she, right. but she outliving the writer. Well, but she had, a, she had a brown husband. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, and she does have a bunch of extremely tanned suitors, at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I just, I think now, like, we got it. She built her army. She can come aboard. She's a threat. I don't need to see her take another town. <laughs> like, like, like yeah, we got. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got. Let's, let's <laughs> right. head to the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah, okay, right. enough yeah, is yeah, enough. Yeah. And uh, look. By, but we don't know if Daenerys dies in season five or six or something. Uh, by that time, we might love someone else, right? Because mm -hmm. there's so many characters. And so, like, for example, we hated <laughs> the Hound until we now all of a sudden love the Hound. Yeah, well, he's, that, he's, the, got he a, he's got a good heart, you know? He he's, defended her even though she's valueless now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She stole the dagger from him but didn't stab him with it. He no. didn't even know she had it. Right. I remember, it was, he wanted to help Sa uh, Sansa out. He did, help, Sa he did help Sansa out. Yeah. He bragged yeah. about it to, to Arya to sort of like... Yeah. No, please like me. Yeah. Like, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> we've got five kings. We had the five kings, right? We had um, Stannis, who actually is the one true king. Well, we have to talk about that eventually. Okay. But, yeah. uh, we had uh, Renly, his brother, who had no claim at all. It was just clowning around, if you ask me. We had Balon Greyjoy, who has no chance of being the ultimate king. He's just having fun in his iron. Uh, he wouldn't even want. He wouldn't even want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Uh, and then we had, of course, Rob Stark and Joffrey, right? So Rob Stark's dead. Renly's dead. Balon's always been irrelevant. 
So within, between fire and ice, we're down to Stannis and the Lannisters. Because Joffrey might be king, but it's actually Tywin, of course. Right. But Stannis, though, recognizing the actual danger, mm. or theoretically, because it turns out the Red Woman, you know, like, her intent might be pure. Like, she's messed up, but she wasn't lying. She was seeing things that she saw, and now she's like, nope, that's right, the White Walkers are coming. So there's two <laughs> problems in any kind of movies or TV shows that deal with either time travel or predicting things, right? Which is that things change, right? Mm -hmm. So she saw Stannis as the king and all this stuff, and she was like, go that way, go that way. She sees like one thing from a raven, she's like, oh, never mind. Okay, <laughs> like, go the other way. No, but right? she's, not saying, she's not saying that. She's just saying that there's an external threat. She still thinks he's king. I don't think they're inconsistent. It's just another piece no, of information. No, but she was seeing things where he's sitting on the Iron Throne and he, she's, right, he's but, defeated. The, but now it seems like she's saying, don't worry about defeating Balon and don't worry about the leeches and the Joffreys. In fact, you're going to have to get those guys together to go up right, north. Right, right, right. But I still, to me, that's not inconsistent. Like, she doesn't see things that automatically happen. Like, mm. stuff has to, as obviously by getting the new fresh king's blood, Stuff needs to be put in play to make those things and she's happen. she's interpreting what she's she inter sees. She's interpreting of. what yeah. she's seeing, right, so. And, and is anybody rooting for Stannis? He is the real king. Oh, what a pain in the ass. But what a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like the most unlikable guy. Yeah. Like, n that's not an evil character. He's somewhere in the middle. Right. And they got a guy playing him who looks like he's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, all right, we got to go. Uh, uh, ten months. 10 months, 10, 40 freaking weeks. And if the next That's season... That's how long it takes to have a baby, and that took forever. Mm. <laughs> if in the next season they don't kill Joffrey, I'm going to be so freaking upset. Oh, and speaking oh, of which... that scene where he wants to serve uh, the head of... Uh, Rob Stark to Sansa. Stark to Sansa. <laughs> Fuck that guy! <laughs> Somebody tell <laughs> him already! Somebody <laughs> send their regards! Last, last, last thing is actually the most disturbing scene all season was actually not the Red Wedding. It was post-Red Wedding, in the beginning of this episode, oh, when they were trotting Rob around without the head and the wolf's head. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man. An Arya season. An Arya season. Yeah, and now if I was Arya, it'd make me want to do this to every <laughs> single Frey and Lannister in the whole world. And I'd be like, Valor Margolis, where are you? I have a thousand other names for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, great uh, season, best season so far, I think. But uh, that And this were... was fun. I'm yeah, gonna miss this almost as much as the show. Yeah, uh, John and I were saying that we are still uh, gonna meet uh, every Monday uh, mm -hmm. at uh, 9.30, and uh, we're gonna do, what show shall we do? Oh, uh, we're gonna do Two Broke Girls. Two Broke Girls, yeah. 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 An well, hour of analysis yeah. <laughs> every Monday. Yeah. By the way, if you guys actually met every Monday morning and did Two Broke Girls, that might be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to be meeting on Skid Row. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but no, we'll be back with other uh, shows of uh, significance uh, going forward. And obviously, Mad Men continues for another couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody.